Hey everyone, it's Circuit 6 and welcome to another episode. This time I'm going to go over how to set up a ARC Survival Evolve server. In this video I'm going to show you how to use the Steam Console client to download the application which will run the server. And it can also be used in a lot of other games. So this tutorial not only will help you get your ARC server set up, but it'll help you get other servers set up in the future. Make sure to take a look in the description below so you can see all the references and links that I'm going to be using in this video. One of the first things you're going to want to do is head over to developer.valvesoftware.com to download the Steam Console Client or Steam CMD. This command line version of the Steam Client is primarily used to update dedicated servers. Once the client's downloaded, go ahead and open the zip file, copy the executable which is contained inside, and paste it into a directory of your choice. Me, I put it on a separate hard drive under a folder called Steam. The first time you run this file, it's going to download all the files needed so that you can connect to Steam and download all the files you need for any application. Now that the files are downloaded, we can go ahead and close our Steam application console window and you'll see all the files created. The next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to create a batch file which will tell the Steam console client exactly what application it is we're trying to download. To do this, right click anywhere in the window and select new and then text document. I'm going to give it a name so I can recognize it easily in the future and call it arc server .bat. The dot bat stands for batch file. A batch file is basically a list of instructions that are going to be executed in order. In order to edit our batch file and give it a list of instructions, we're going to right click on it and select edit. Here's where I'm going to paste in the instructions needed for the Steam command console client to connect to Steam and download the application. One of the most important things here is that you'll need to use your Steam login. So replace username and password with your Steam username and your Steam password. In addition, you'll also need to tell it a force installation directory. This is where it's going to store the application files that it downloads. Next to that, we have the app update with an ID number. This ID number identifies the ARC application. You can use the same type of batch file for other applications within Steam just by figuring out the application ID number and giving it a new installation directory. Now when we run this batch file, it'll execute the commands inside. The first time you run it, it's most likely going to ask you to authorize your account using Steam Guard because it doesn't recognize you connecting from this type of platform before. Once you've authorized your account, the application will start downloading after it allocates the appropriate space. This is a 14 gigabyte installation, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this a little bit so you don't have to sit and watch the download the whole time. It's also important to note that the batch file that we just created can be used later on anytime there's an update released. If you run the batch file again, it'll check your current version that's installed and apply any patches that are necessary. So updating becomes very easy. So make sure you hang on to that batch file. Now that our application's been downloaded and installed, we're going to go ahead and open it up. It's in our ARC server folder. We're going to go into there, into shooter game, into binaries, Windows 64, and in here is where the server is actually hosted. So in order to make this server work correctly, we're going to have to create another batch file which will tell the server how to start. So again, right click anywhere, go to new, and then select text document. I'm going to call this one start server.bat, and inside of here will be the instructions on how to start the actual ARC server. Now don't forget, I'm going to put everything in the description below so you can copy and paste and do whatever you need. So here we're going to go ahead and just paste in the basic command to get started. So what this is going to do, it's going to start the server and there's a bunch of properties in here that we can change. So the session name will actually be your server name. So in here, I'm just going to call this a test server so we can find it easily in the list later. Also keep in mind the ports that are here are very important. This is how people are going to be able to connect to your game. You're going to have to make sure that these ports are forwarded through your router in order for people to remotely access it. So save your file, close this out, and let's take a look at port forwarding. If you head over to portforward.com, it'll explain to you exactly what port forwarding is. But also contained in here is a link to setuprouter.com. This is a place where you can go and you can find your specific router and access the screens, which will tell you exactly how to navigate and forward the ports required. Once you've found your router in the list, go ahead and follow the instructions to find the port forwarding setup 
and four of the ports that were listed within the batch file that we set up for our ARC server. Once you've completed that, you should be able to go back into your server folder and start the batch file that we created. A command window should open, which looks something like this with the application ID listed at the top. If that's not there and it gives you an error telling you that it can't open a socket, you need to take a look at that number and check your port forwarding again. The first time your server runs, it's going to create a new folder within your shooter game folder called saved, config, and then under Windows Server, you should have game user settings.ini. This file contains all the server parameters that you can change and configure to modify things such as your max players allowed on the server, if you want to have a password so it's password protected, and various other settings. So if you right click this file and select edit, we can go ahead and start changing some of the settings. All of the settings again will be listed in the description below. So at the bottom of this text file within brackets, I'm going to go ahead and put in the server settings and underneath server settings, I'm going to choose a password so that nobody else can connect without actually knowing the password. To do that, I'm going to type server password equals and then just a random password, whatever you feel like putting. Also below, so you can put things such as max players or you can show the user's position on the map if you want. Uh, there's a whole list of settings that I'll include again in the description below. That covers just about everything you need to know to set up your very own ARC server. Now, in order to test to see if your server is actually live or not, there's a great website we can go to to see if it's there. Keep in mind though, it takes several minutes, especially the first time you start your server, in order for it to become active within their list. So if you don't see it within the first couple of minutes, just be patient, give it five to 10 minutes, and then if it still doesn't show up, you can start troubleshooting what might be wrong. So head over to arcservers.net and here you'll see a list of every active server that's currently running. You can click on the server name within the list to sort everything alphabetically. If you do this, it should make it a little bit easier to find your, uh, your actual server. Once you see your server within the list, you should feel pretty confident that everything is working correctly. You can go ahead and share this with your friends if you want. They can click directly on your IP address to join your game as long as Steam is open. Another way to find your game is by simply using the search bar at the top and typing in the server name that you configured. If it comes up in the list, again, you can give this to your friends, tell them to search for that server, and they can click and join it. The server should also be available within the list within the game itself. All right, that pretty much does it. So hopefully by now you have your own ARC server up and running. As always, if you found this video helpful, informative at all, please share it, rate, comment, subscribe, anything. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll try and respond to them as soon as I possibly can. See you in the next episode.